welcome to the Champs Elysees Film Festival Roundtables, the directors in competition. So today with us we have uh, Gren Wells for The Road Within and Matthew Heinemann for Cartoland. What brought you to filmmaking? Well, for me, um, I like being in charge. So uh, I've been a professional writer for 15 years and no one cares what the writer says or thinks or um, they just you know care that you leave. Uh, when they go to make the movies, so I just knew that if I wanted to get my point of view across, uh, that I had to do it myself. I had absolutely no idea I wanted to be a filmmaker. I, I studied history in, in college and um, totally just fell in, into filmmaking. I, I sort of hatched up an idea when I was in university to drive around the U.S. for three months, uh, interviewing people from all walks of life, and that was my, my first film. As my film school, I taught myself how to do everything and um, sort of started my career. Did you go to film school? Mm -hmm. Nothing can prepare you for the first day on set. It, it just, it's something that, and I, I went and shadowed a lot of friends on their films, very established directors, and I asked them all the same question. I said, what do you wish you knew before you made your first movie? And they all said, there's so many things, you just have to be able to adapt because something's going to go wrong that you don't anticipate and you have to make a decision quickly. What would be maybe for these films you're presenting here at the Champs-Élysées Film Festival, maybe the worst or hardest time you had on set? I think because I hired three actors who couldn't drive um, and mine's a road movie, <laughs> that was difficult because we ended up only being able to drive on private roads uh, we did cheat a couple times, and um, Dev Patel has a driver's license, but he's the worst driver of all of them. Uh, but Zoe didn't know how to drive. She had never driven before. She grew up in New York. Uh, and then Robert Sheehan uh, had a learner's permit from Ireland. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's pretty hard to compare, I think, the two situations. I mean, I was filming a documentary in a war zone uh, when getting shot at. I was in meth labs. I was in torture chambers. I was in all sorts of pretty intense situations, so um, those were all very difficult, uh, both in a filmmaking way and sense and in a sort of personal sense as well. How did you work with actors? For obviously, you know, we, we're, we make, both make films, but the process is sort of different. You know, for me, uh, I wanted to make a film uh, about vigilantism, about citizens who took the law into their own hands, and so at the heart of my film are two men, two 55-year-old men, one on uh, the Arizona side of the Mexican border and one in, in Mexico. Um, both who uh, have taken the law into their own hands, both who are leading this, these vigilante groups, uh, and both who believe that the government has failed them. We did six months worth of rehearsals. And we wanted to do an authentic portrayal uh, so that no one could come back and say, oh, this wasn't real or, you know, you made fun of this, this, these people. We just worked every day. Uh, for eight hours a day on creating these ticks. How do you select which vigilante you're going to follow, uh, which situations you're going to go into? The difficulty in, in, in making documentary films is that you, you don't have an ending. You have no idea where the story's going. <clears throat> and with Cartelling, I really had no idea. I thought I was telling this very simple story at first. I thought I was telling this sort of classic Western with uh, you know, guys in white shirts. Well, it's not white. But <laughs> guys, guys in white shirts sort of fighting against guys in black hats. And then quickly I realized that the story was much more complicated and, and gray and, and that the, those who were fighting evil were becoming evil. And so I was constantly sort of shifting what I thought the movie was, who I thought the main characters were. For me, uh, at least in documentary film, that process of discovery is what makes it beautiful is, is that you you don't know what you're telling. How did you work with your editor? I actually had three editors and myself editing as well. So we had four editors working on at once, which is sort of a crazy experiment. He had a, a week to put together just a rough cut, and mm -hmm. then we were together every day, all day. Uh, and it was a, actually a magical relationship because we were so like-minded that we would watch a, a scene and I would literally open my mouth and go, oh, and he goes like, I'm already on it, because he knew we, we were just in sync. So someone actually at a, at a festival recently said to me uh, in a Q&A, they're like, oh my God, like, what was that like working with actors? Like, you know, it must have been an incredible uh, like, 
in the shootout, like how did you direct that scene? And, and when you were in the meth lab, like how did you direct that scene? I said, well, <laughs> it's actually real, and those are real people, and those are real situations. How do you infiltrate a cartel? Yeah, you know, I, I think people always ask me, like, why, why do people take part in documentaries? Why do they um, agree? And I think it's sort of the same common denominator, whether it's, you know, this film that I just did in uh, the cartels or my last film in healthcare. It's people want their story to be told. And I think with the meth lab, that was something that, I, that was really important to me. Uh, your film, when, when we saw it, it reminded us of a, of a film called, a German one called, um, uh, Vincent Romier. Was there an influence there? Did you? Oh no! I, it's based on that. It's, it's based I, on I that. I optioned that. So uh, I saw the trailer in I think it was 2011, and I remember just seeing if they could put that much heart and humor into two minutes, that the movie had to be amazing. We had a foreign sales agent on from the get-go, and we ran all the casting ideas by them. We didn't need a lot of sales, but but why not go into a project knowing that you're not gonna lose money? I did feel like it's, it resonates with, with young people. Your subject is very, it's very wide known. Everybody knows about the cartels even outside the US and, and America, but is it something that you keep in mind from the get-go? I was constantly wondering, you know, what would I do if my sister was raped or my brother was hanging from a bridge? Would I take up arms? Would I fight violence with violence? Is that just, is that right? This tale of sort of armed groups rising up to fight against evil. It's happened throughout history. It's happening all across the world today. It will continue to happen all across the world. We premiered the film at Sundance and, you know, there and since then it's been, it's been really incredible to see our audiences react, um, both in the U.S. and outside the U.S. Do you think you'll keep on making movies, whatever, whatever comes next? I've already uh, chosen my next one. It took me a long time. I Part of it, and this goes a little bit into the U.S., where you know they don't necessarily embrace female filmmakers as much as I, I think Europe does. I was uh, chosen as one of Variety's top ten directors to watch, and the next day I got, I think it was 13 rom-coms sent to me. I was like, I'm sorry, just because I have a vagina, does that I can only direct rom-coms? But it is, it's something that that speaks to me and excites me, and and I know after this one, spending three years on this project. You have to love something more than, more than anything in order to invest this kind of time and energy into it. I love documentary films, you know, and I love the ability to every two or three years dive into a world or subject or person um, and then reinvent myself um, and constantly trying to reinvent myself and, and, and who I am as a filmmaker and as, as an artist. And, um, there's actually a few narrative films that I'm currently developing as well now, so we'll see what the future holds, but... Cinema can capture dreams. The whole point of a movie, it does, it transports you into this other world. At least when they're done well, they do. And for two hours, you're not checking your phone, checking your watch or whatever, you're just, you're in that world. It's a shame now that this new generation will watch a movie on their phone. It kills me, I'm just like, oh my God, just go to the cinema. I'm, I'm going to take the question slightly more literally. I think for, for these cartel end, I think the, the sort of basis of the film is, is this conflict between dreams, idealism, and reality. Well, thank you very much for answering our questions. And uh, I hope you have a great time here at the festival. And best of luck with the screenings. Thank Thanks for you. Having us.